Hi, welcome to Mark's English Academy, the place to learn English fast. This is the first lesson in my series on common mistakes. In this series, I'm going to show you all the most common mistakes that English students make, and I'll show you how you can fix them. Okay, I want to begin this series by showing you a few mistakes that I make. So here are three mistakes that I make quite often and many other native English speakers make these mistakes as well. So the first mistake that I make is using the words funner and funnest. Now, your grammar textbook will probably tell you not to use these words. It'll say that you should use the words more fun and most fun. That's true, especially in writing. When you're writing a, a paper for university, you shouldn't use these words. But when we speak English, when native English speakers talk naturally, we use these words all the time. Uh, business people use these words. Politicians use these words. Everyone uses the words funner and funnest. Okay, so there are some cases where you can't use these words, where you should use the, the words more fun and most fun instead. And I'll show you those examples now. So if I say that was the funnest party ever, then I can use the word funnest. So if, if we're talking about a party we had last night, I would say, wow, that was the funnest party ever. Okay, then I can use funnest because I'm describing the word party, the funnest party. Okay, this is an adjective. When the word fun is an adjective, then it can be used as in the form funnest. All right, but let's look at the second sentence here. That was the most fun I've ever had. So in this situation, we need to say most fun because the word fun isn't describing any words. Look, fun, fun doesn't describe any words in this sentence. If I had the word time here, that was the most fun time I've ever had, then I would say that was the funnest time I've ever had. But it's not here. So I have to say most fun. You can't say that was the funnest I've ever had. The funnest what? Okay, and the word funner is the same. So the game, the, uh, this game is funner than that one. Funner game. It's describing the word game. So this game is funner than that one. But if you say, I had more fun than you, then you have to say more fun. You can't say, I had funner than you did. I had funner than you did. That doesn't make sense. You have to say, I had more fun than you did. Because the word fun here is a noun. And nouns don't describe things. Adjectives do. Okay, so it's a, it's a noun. It's not describing anything. It's like any other noun. We could put the word pizza or beer here. I had more pizza than you did. I had more beer than you did. I had more fun than you did. Okay. 
So I hope you uh, understand how to use uh, how to use the the differences between between funnest and most fun and funner and more fun because it's it's important if you get it wrong then it will sound it'll sound really awkward like if you say that was the funnest I've ever had or that was the most fun party ever nobody says that we always say that was the funnest party ever or this game is funner than that one some people might say this game is more fun than that one but I think everyone that I know would say this game is funner than that one and that was the f that was the most fun I've ever had that was the funnest party ever yeah uh, it can be a little bit confusing but uh, just try to remember if it's an adjective then it's funnest and funner and if it's a noun then you just use more fun or most fun okay uh, I think you'll probably understand that the next mistake I make is using the word theirs with a plural noun so the word theirs is a contraction for there is anytime we put two words together with an apostrophe we call it a contraction so theirs is a contraction that means there is and is is a singular verb so the mistake I make is saying a sentence like this there's two men outside with guns okay if I hear shooting outside and I look out the window I would say there's two men outside with guns but that's a mistake because there's two men men is a plural uh, noun so I need uh, I need a plural verb so it needs to be there are two men outside with guns there are two men outside with guns the problem is that there are can't really be a contraction look there are, there are. it sounds a little bit weird there are two men outside with guns there are two men outside with guns you could you could say that but it's it's just it sounds awkward I don't use this contraction I don't think I use it ever um, and the word theirs can also mean there has there has uh, so for example if I say there's never been so many people here there's never there has never been so many people here there's uh, for example if I threw a party here at my house then I would say wow and if 50 people showed up I would say wow there's never been so many people here but that's a mistake because people is obviously more than one so I need to use there have there never been so many people here there have never been so many people here now again the problem is that there it sounds awkward there have if you put them together there there have never been so many people here I don't know does that sound awkward to you it's it sounds weird to me and I don't I don't use it so instead I say there's never been so many people here now if this was a singular noun then it would be okay though and then it would be correct and if this was a singular noun then it would be correct as well to use there is and there has for example um, if we say rain the the noun rain is is singular so I could say there's been lots of rain this summer there's been so much rain this summer there has been so much rain one thing rain has 
So that matches. So anyway, that's the mistake that I make by using the singular verbs in contractions instead of using the plural verbs because the plural verbs just sound awkward. The reason it seems like you should use theirs is because in most simple sentences the, the first word is often the subject of the sentence. So subject verb. For example, um, I eat pizza. Okay, I eat. But if I say he eats pizza. So there sounds like one thing. But there isn't the subject of the sentence. There, there isn't a noun. The subject of the sentence is men. And here too. The subject of the sentence is people. People, the subject is here and the verb is here. The subject is here and the verb is there. So, uh, when we start sentences with the word there, it can be a little bit confusing. When you write, if, you, if you're writing an academic paper, you shouldn't start sentences with there. It's, it's not good writing to say, you know, there's a man with a gun. No, it, there are other ways you can say that. So remember, when you're writing, uh, don't use, uh, don't start a sentence with there. Also, when you're writing, don't use funner and funnest. Okay, the third mistake that I make is with this, the subjunctive mood. In your grammar textbook, you'll probably read about this, the subjunctive mood. That's when we're talking about hypothetical situations. And they start with the word if. Okay, if. If I was rich, I would buy a yacht. So this is the mistake that I make with the subjunctive mood. If I was rich, I would buy a yacht. Now, a yacht is a personal boat that you can live on and it's very expensive. A lot of rich people have yachts and if you watch rap music videos on YouTube, you'll notice that a lot of videos have a black rapper on a yacht with some girls. Okay, that is so common for a rap video uh, to have a yacht. Okay, so the mistake here is that this should be were. If I were rich, I would buy a yacht. So, I mean, I don't think it's a very serious mistake because I know a lot of people that, that say it this way. If I was rich, I would buy a yacht. Um, but, you know, your grammar textbook probably says to use were, and I do too. I use the word were sometimes. I would say, if I were rich, I would buy a yacht. Yeah, I say that. But I also use the word was sometimes. So, anyway, that's a mistake that, that I make sometimes. And in my lessons, you'll hear me make these three mistakes quite often. Funner, funnest, theirs, and, and was. Okay, next I'm going to show you some more mistakes that native English speakers make that I don't make. And I hate those mistakes. And I look down on people who make those mistakes. I think they're uneducated. Okay, so I'll show you what those mistakes are, but first, it's sponsor time. This lesson is brought to you by nobody.
Instead of watching me buy dumplings, you could be watching me promote your product or service. All right, here are some more mistakes that native English speakers make that you should never make. The first one is with the word an. Some native English speakers never use the word an. I know some people from Canada and the United States who don't use the word an. And that's terrible. It's only two letters, a-n, so it's easy to remember, so you should use it. Okay, one example of this is in Sean Paul's song called She Doesn't Mind. He says, I'm an animal. I'm an animal. Okay, that's wrong because the word animal begins with a vowel sound, a. So it should be, I'm an animal. Okay, another word that some native English speakers never use is the word fewer. So they would say something like, I have less chocolate bars than you. I have less chocolate bars than you. That's wrong because the word chocolate bars is a countable noun. So you should use the word fewer. For example, I have, I have three chocolate bars here from Germany. And if you had four chocolate bars, then I would say I have fewer chocolate bars than you because I can count them. One, two, three. But if we were drinking milk, for example, if I had a glass of milk and you had a glass of milk and you had this much and I only had this much, then I would say I have less milk than you. The third word that some native English speakers never use is the word gone. Uh, they say things like, I haven't went to that restaurant yet. I haven't went to that restaurant yet. That's terrible English. Uh, but I know a lot of people, uh, especially from the United States, I'm not sure why, but uh, I know some people from the United States who say, I haven't went, they use have and went together. And that's, that's incorrect. Um, went is a past tense verb. So if, we, if we're talking about the past tense, we use the verb went. I went to the restaurant yesterday. That's good. But this sentence isn't past tense. It's present perfect tense. Okay, because we have the word have. I haven't gone to that restaurant yet. Or you could say, I haven't been to that restaurant yet. But you can't say went. All right, so, so some people, they don't use the word gone, and that's bad English. If you're using the present perfect tense, then you say have gone. Or if you're using the past perfect tense, then had gone. I had gone to that restaurant five times before I got sick there. Okay, so those are a few mistakes that native English speakers make. I hope you don't make them. Please don't. And if, if you like eating chocolate, then click on the subscribe button right down there and I might share some of my chocolate with you. So until next time, uh, I'll say bye and I'll see you over in the next video while I enjoy my German chocolate. Take care.